Our first speakers after the break are Mr. Carl Childs and Mr. Fraser Smith. We are so glad that they both are here to talk about VMware certification paths. First, I would like to introduce Mr. Carl Childs. He is a senior manager with VMware Education Services. He has over 20 years of experience in IT education and certification, working with global companies such as VMware, HP, Novell, and MCI. His background is in instructional technology and training development, and he enjoys applying those skills within the IT and software industry. With him today is Mr. Fraser Smith. He's a dedicated learning and development professional with over 10 years of experience managing, designing, developing, communicating, and implementing large-scale learning experiences, skilled in determining client needs and ensuring growth and compliance through comprehensive reporting and analysis. He is proficient in Cisco networking products, CCNA, Linux administration, Microsoft Windows Server, Azure, AWS, Puppet, Kubernetes, and virtualization frameworks, he holds a wide variety of certifications. As a reminder to all of our attendees, this conference is being recorded. We will have Q&A at the end of this presentation. Please use the Q&A tool if you have a question for the speaker. Over to you, Mr. Carl and Fraser. You both can share your content and unmute yourself. Thank you for being here. All right, thank you, Sana. Just to confirm as I bring um, this up, I'll be able to share. Okay, well, I appreciate the opportunity um, to uh, present again. We were able to share last conference as well and talk about some of the different technologies and things that we were doing. And so we wanted to expand a little bit on that. Um, last year, we had talked about primarily our exam and our certification testing, and I'll still cover um, some of that side as well. But with Fraser on and joining, we have the opportunity to also talk a lot about our um, training modalities as well and the technologies that we're using um, for that. So, so let me share this now, the screen. Advance, there we go, got it. Okay, so um, as we talk about the technology area that we're in, and you just read that list um, of the, all the different certifications and the expertise that Frazier has. Frazier has lived his life. I'm going to assume, Frazier, this might even be a picture of your feet. I don't know. <laughs> but um, there is a, uh, we look at the different technical roles that we train and certify for at VMware. Um, and this is going to be similar across all these different IT companies. And you may have experienced um, the same type of, of, uh, of, a, of need. But there is, um, there is a lot of complicated and integrated and um, complex and from different vendor right products and solutions that an administrator that's technical whether they're on the system administrator side whether they're on the architecture side um, the security side networking whatever it may be there's a lot of crossover and a lot of complex solutions and even within vmware and vmware products itself especially today as we're moving to a multi-cloud of supporting multi-cloud and delivering multi-cloud solutions it touches um, we're able to manage and touch a lot of different companies products as well just through the vmware platform and so platforms and so it, it gets really really complex and so having an opportunity uh, for especially for a lot of, of those coming out of college or entry level changing careers coming over and beginning to learn and take and look for practice and opportunities to get some hands-on experience with a lot of these different solutions uh, becomes very, very critical. Uh, it's very, it's great to take training and online training and um, and even classroom training where you may have some um, some access to uh, to the systems and software. But once you leave the class, there's a need there, especially for those that aren't able to set up um sandbox environments or or their own home environments to play with or may not have an opportunity at their jobs or at work to have their hands on and so so as complex as their needs there is a, as complex as a child can be for these these technical roles um there very much is a need for this and so that really underlines the need why we deliver or the reason why we as vmware have a training and a certification business and organization to deliver it. I shared some of this last year, um, which maybe some of those may be, be still accessible. I won't cover or spend a lot of time on this, but as we talk about uh, being able to provide hands on training, and I'm, we're going to talk a little bit about how that is available virtually and what we offer um, this hands on training through the technologies that we have. 
Um, this there's benefits that this provides, especially as a as a candidate, someone may get through training and move on to certification. And so um, even through certifying and validating that there is a set of, uh, of expertise that this individual has, it benefits them personally. It benefits them um, as a person of just I talk to a lot of people that get certified and a lot of benefit is hey, I I have the confidence in myself now. I know I can do it. So there's some personal benefits. Um, there's some tangible benefits that come with jobs and salaries and things like that. But there's also a benefit to the organization. It really does. Um, there has been studies done. In fact, I'll share a slide here that um, that shows how organizations have benefited from those on staff who are trained um, and who are certified and then also the combination of trained and certified. And it really does have, there's some tangible numbers associated with each one of these benefits to where productivity and, and uh, time to speed, so I don't think it's on there, there's a, there's a time to speed to resolution um, uh, as there's uh, on support teams. Um, all of these different things come back to the organization as well. This is just a uh, mention of some of the little bit recent, these are from um, a year ago, the new study is actually here coming out this next year. So these are based on the study that came out last year um, from Pearson. But there is a uh, it shows you some of the numbers. And in fact, I think my next slide here we go actually shows some of that those tangible or those those specific numbers there. So very high numbers. Um, I mentioned some of the personal benefits. Seventy six percent reported that they have that increased respect from peers. I talked and the confidence I mentioned. Ninety one percent reported back on them. The really cool thing about this slide, you can see some of those high numbers on there. My favorite number on this is the one at the bottom right. Of those that um, earned a pay increase, 50, and not every, you know, certification is not 100% pay increase, right? But many, many do that. Majority do get uh, pay increases or jobs from, from training certified. But those that do were rewarded with that pay increase within three months of earning that certification and then 77% within six months. To me, that's huge because it shows the immediacy, how quickly those benefits can um, can be realized after getting trained and certified. So I love that number. I think it's a really, really cool number. So, um, so there's definitely uh, benefits to the individual. This is the benefit to the organization. Um, organizations have, they quantified that number. $10,000 per certified employee that comes back to the organization. So imagine if you're certifying, you know, if you have a team, a support team, and even if you get, you know, five, 10 of that support team, depending on how large your organization is, what that value comes back to your organization for. So, so there's a lot of value that comes from, from certification. The reason I share this as we're talking about experiential learning, and as we're talking about as I start to lead into some of the technologies we use to provide that experiential learning, is because as we think back to my first slide with all those wires, it is there is so much complexity in the in the IT space. There are so many different routes that an individual can take, different expertise areas, um, and and figuring all of that out is uh, this opportunity to have that hands-on, not only hands-on um, validation, but hands through testing through these virtual tech tools and technologies, um, but also just playing around, experiencing, experimenting, um, identifying, figuring out what are those areas that you want. There's, there's the whole range that I'm gonna be talking to about getting just that first access to, to see if there's interest or if that's something that you enjoy to more of the formal training through the, the validation through testing. And so, so all of those different tools and technologies exist to realize these benefits that I just shared. And so that's why I thought it was important. It really underlines the need, underlies the need um, to have these, uh, these, these tools and technologies in place. So for our, our program here at VMware, we have four different levels of certification, and um, and they go in range from the if you look at from the go from the bottom on up, um, more uh, is entry level at the bottom and then more advanced at the top. So our our entry level and operators has become we're actually starting to look at that term and we're a little bit in adjusting some of our VCT and VCP targets uh, just because the industry continues to change, evolve a little bit. But our VCTA is is targeted towards that more of the entry level. Um, so operator could be a good word, junior admin, uh, junior sys admin, um, analyst, business analyst, those types of, of roles. 
Um, so it's an, an introductory certification to our technologies. Um, and then on up through VCP is really our experienced a year experience. So first job, have some experience under their belt, have learned a lot of things and really can prove that expertise and that learning through additional training um, at that VCP level. Um, we do target it at at least a year, six months to a year of experience. It It's actually a tough certification. It typically takes a little bit more than that, but um, but it's aimed at that professional level. And then VCAP is more of that multiple year experience under your belt, the advanced professional, and then um, our high level enterprise or solution architect there at the top. So four different levels. Within these different levels, um, uh, we also have across different tracks, which you know, that's like, okay. So, um, um, and so as I talked about technologies, we actually have six different tracks and within those tracks, those levels are represented um, different up, depending on the area with our virtualized data center area, our cloud areas, our security areas, our networking areas, and our and our um, developer, our application and uh, endpoint workspace area. So uh, different tracks and uh, certification. So that's how our program set up. So um, with that said, I'm going to transition over and Frazier, if you want to talk to this slide here, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the technologies that we offer for this experiential hands on learning for our candidates and customers and students. Absolutely. Thanks, Carl. Um, so as uh, Carl mentioned, I'm on the curriculum side of things. Uh, Oops, while sorry. <laughs> I'm on the curriculum <laughs> side of things while uh, Carl is on the certification. So I'm the I'm the senior manager over um, vSphere, VMware Cloud, and our HCX product lines. So as I talk about uh, these solutions, it's probably going to be around the idea of the vSphere ICM uh, or the other vSphere curriculum. So uh, vSphere ICM and Soft Configure Manage as well as vSphere Optimize and Scale are two of the courses that we have available for our version seven of um, the curriculum that supports the VCP or VMware Certified Professional Data Center Virtualization Certification Path. That course doesn't have a direct lab component like a VCAP would have uh, with the deploy, but it is um, written in a way that if you don't have hands on experience with the product, it's going to be pretty difficult to pass. Uh, so we try to ensure that candidates for these uh, positions have plenty of opportunities uh, to be able to prepare to pass the certification. Uh, so traditionally, when you think of VMware certification courses, you probably think about the ILT course, which is that classroom ILT where it's going to be instructor led. They're going to teach it either in person or now we do live online, which is a direct extension of the ILT, uh, depending on if you took it at a VATC where you might be working on a live environment locally, um, or you might take it live online with VMware where you are um, using a remote access that has a infrastructure in one of our data centers that you can then manipulate and work with. Uh, either way, you're getting a similar experience, right? Where you're getting that hands-on activity in a real environment where things can break, uh, things can get ugly, things can go really well, just depending on how you work in that environment. As an educator for going on, you know, 12, 13 years, one of the things that I really think is important is you need that little bit of risk, whenever, the little bit of stakes whenever you're learning in an environment. Um, we can all do simulations, which are great opportunities to learn specific features. But when you're looking at implementation, you need to have the ability for things to break so that way you can learn how to fix them. Uh, so we do have a little bit of that in our ILT and uh, Live Online. Kind of jumping around a little bit, if you go down to that yellow block that says Lab Connect, we also provide immersive lab environments that you can then test on. Not everyone has a home lab. Not everyone has access to credits to be able to then go spin up bare metal infrastructure somewhere. Um, so through our Customer Connect Learning Platform, we also provide this hands-on um, experience with a real lab environment. Um, we have on-demand offerings, which are very similar to the Live Online or Classroom ILT, where you have a dedicated instructor that has taught the class, and you're watching the videos, you're reviewing the materials, and you're completing the labs in most of those courses. Finally, uh, I'll jump a little bit over to private training. That is typically done for us whenever we have a bulk of people uh, within a building uh, or within an area for a business. We'll go there and teach them. That's about 
um, very similar to once again our ILT lava line and on demand. They're, they're a similar experience from an experience point of view on your labs. Uh, finally, we have Connect Learning, and this is probably our newest offering. Um, it allows for more of that traditional e-learning that you may think of, where you're instead of focusing on everything that you have to know in order to pass an ICM, you might focus more on, well, I need to know a little bit more about distributed switches. I need to know a little bit more about uh, vSAN and how it integrates within my uh, cluster. Uh, and so you're going to see more and more e-learning from VMware that looks at the how do I and the why am I doing it this way um, as we continue to modernize and move forward. As we talked about those, um, here's again another image of all of that before, um, that access to training. So as we think about access to this hands-on labs, the different modalities that Frazier talked about, the value that comes from offering it in many different ways, hands-on, especially in this IT and software world where VMware centers, we're, we're a software company, um, becomes, um, and, and in this new hybrid workspace, workplace um, world that we're living in as well and remote. In fact, both Frazier and I work remotely, as you're going to have for long, for many years. We have, um, it becomes so much more important to have that availability for this training. And, um, and, and this is a little bit tongue in cheek picture here and, and, and pretty standard nowadays, as you see this. Um, I don't know where he's getting Wi Fi on that beach from, but he uh, <laughs> to access love, but it really you can access this technologies from really anywhere in the world and, and access these labs um, when it works. Like, mine, like I said, mine's just spinning here, but um, be able to access that. And so this is what our products we talk about this. This is what um, it primarily looks like. And depending on the different modalities that, that Frazier had covered, whether it is in a, a training center, you mentioned VATC, that's what that is, VMware Authorized Training Center, um, or if it's more of the Lab Connect, or the which is the lab you can buy separately that Fraser mentioned, or um, as part of a class, this is, or hands-on labs for practice, this is what it looks like. This is, um, so a little bit different look on those, but this is primarily what it looks like. We do run it, um, what we call our VMware, um, uh, VLP, VMware um, Learning Platform, and it is it provides there on the left side it provides that is that is the system if you were to bring this up um, on your computer and, and managing and automating a real live environment production environment this is you know this is what you would see basically this is you know someone's desktop but um you'd have access to these same products and so as you run this up it's a real live running environment um, it provides things like timers it provides um, automatic startups, um, things that you can manage as you get into the access. This hands-on lab particular, this one I'm showing now, when I say hands-on lab, that's access to a sandbox environment you can just play with and do really do anything in, but it does also offer that guided practice. So on the right side there, there's labs and it covers through um, different steps. So steps that you can follow to learn. I mentioned that entry level learner gives them an opportunity to just play around with the software and see what it does and follow those steps um, to the more experienced um, uh, admin to where we actually have. I'll, I'll show this in a chart here in a second. We actually have gamified this system and we have challenges to see who can accomplish and troubleshoot and, and solve problems within these environments um, using the same platform within the shortest amount of time. And so they don't get that guided lab. Right for them, it's completely open ended, but um, but it provides from the most experienced to the entry level learners um, the opportunity to get that that hands on. Um, this is the chart that. Um, oh, there's actually this is just a snapshot here of, of, of one example of the hands on labs. This is more of the class environment. Um, uh, practice there, but here is yes, here is the chart um, that I wanted to mention here. This this mirrors. A little bit of what Frazier you were sharing in that in that circle chart um, for uh, the different opportunities, the hands-on experiential learning. So, recognizing that experiential learning is important, recognizing that it actually does solve problems for our learners, especially for those that do not have access to a sandbox or even a production environment, to really um, use those skills or learn those skills on on these software uh, products and environments. There's this ranking or this this range of different opportunities um, from simple to complex, as well as the different costs. And so if you start at the top, this one goes from top to bottom. Um, it, even just showing 
uh, with the exam guide that we have for our certification exams. Um, that's something to download and there's not a hands-on component to that except for the links inside of the exam guide that'll take you over to hands-on labs or things, but it shows very specifically those competencies, those objectives that someone must know to not only, well, to pass the exam, but those objectives are also mapped to what is uh, someone in that role would be doing in, within their job. So, um, so guidance there, entry level learners can use that for guidance as well as those that are looking to take the exam. Um, they need to study that, um, but can use that for guidance to know which, which skills they need to learn. And so then there's the hands-on lab. This is the one that I just showed. So this is that guided instructions, um, open box environment um, that they can get in there and explore. It's not, I put in there, it's not a full sandbox because it does limit some things like you can't, you can't bring it down. <laughs> you know, they have some limitations in that way. Um, where through a sandbox environment, you can, of course, bring the whole thing down, but um, there's some protections, some guide rails around it, guard rails around it that way, but um, but it is a full uh, environment to uh, to explore in there. The Odyssey hands-on lab is what I mentioned before. That's the gamified um, system. So timed and timed in experience in that real environment. Um, limited, I guess, to the, I put in a limited scope of instructions. It's it's not so much that guided path, but it's the task that you have to accomplish. And so it's it's built up in there. Um, and then the training that, that uh, Frazier had covered there, and then our practice exams um, that Extreme Labs that we have Extreme Labs offers and have built. So, um, so the sponsor of the conference have built as a real live. Um, again, it's that it's 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 the same type of environment that Hands On Lab offers. It's an open, real environment um, for you to go in there, and uh, it gives you an opportunity to actually practice as you look towards certification. So, so it gives our candidates, our certification candidates, a chance to see if they're ready to take the real exam. Um, our final exam, when we're talking about a real, we do have a range, I forgot to talk about this, we do have a range of exams types. From the entry level to that VCP, the, the professional level, there is the exam itself is, is our, what we call our standard exam, so multiple choice and, thing, and you know, the exams that we're familiar, more familiar with. Um, the training associated with those is more of the hands-on that Frazier went over, but um, but the exam itself is the standard exam. When we get to the advanced level, we have an advanced level exam to where it really mirrors that hands-on lab. The environment looks, it's actually exactly the same, but instead of the guided path on the right side, the, the document that shows you the steps to take, it gives you the tasks that you must complete as a test taker, and you have to complete those tasks within the environment. Um, so it looks exactly the same, but you're you're you got the timer up there, and you you have to accomplish it within the time you got. Open environment, so you can do the candidate can do wrong things. The candidate can get down wrong trails and start, you know, messing with the different settings and things, whatever they want to do. Right, completely not applicable to the tasks they're trying to do. But if they if they don't know how to finish the task, you know, they could go wherever. It's an open by environment. They can really do anything that they. They need to again with those same guardrails so that they don't shut the whole system down. But um, we have had that happen, by the way. We have had one candidate actually break it. I don't know if you knew that, Frazier. <laughs> they actually brought down the VCAP somehow. I don't know how they did it, but they actually brought it down. But but anyway, it's a uh, um, so it's an open environment, but it, it truly validates that test. So the practice exam that Extreme Labs offers um, simulates and, and really is is very identical to that experience, that test taking experience. So. So all of that, that range, um, anywhere from, we do offer this hands-on labs and training through um, from free access to really getting experience all the way through to, um, to that intense, <laughs> stressful taking the exam to, uh, to get that certification experience. Um, this is actually a snapshot of what that practice exam by Extreme Labs looks like. So, so you do have there, you see it's it's a very similar looking but slightly different than what I shared with the hands-on lab, just the way it's it's kind of out there on the um, on the interface, but the, the directions on the left side there. But you have been, you can see there an, an example of what a question would look like. You have to do certain things, and that box on the right is the completely open environment. Um, the great thing about the practice exam is, of course, it shows you your results. It shows you which specific questions that you got wrong. Um, the actual exam does not do that. We do share the objectives that you missed an item in, uh, but of course we don't give you the answer at the exam. Um, but it's uh, uh, just come back, take it again, you know, if you didn't pass. But but it does give you um, the practice exam does give you that 
those results so that you can evaluate yourself and know where you needed to do more work to go back and practice more on those other areas that we've talked about for that. So um, let me see, I wanted to, okay. So you can see the experience here that we provide. So this is actually right now on the back end. this is spinning up um, a real software environment. Frazier, you can use the terms better than I can, but it's spinning up on that back end. Um, the actual, uh, I guess you call it a, more of a sandbox environment. Um, so this is starting. The reason why it takes a few seconds is because this is actually starting um, the software services on within the, uh, there we go, the back end server, the back end system um, and bringing it up. So I am looking as if I had my administrator console, my administrator computer um, in front of me. Uh, this is exactly what it would look like. So you can see in here I have, um, I could bring up a browser. You know, I could start different software. I have a console here. I can bring it up. So, I mean, I can go as, as you know, here's my menu here. So I can go as pretty much anywhere that it allows me to. Um, and then on this, the right side here, it does provide me the different steps here. So, so begin, that's definitely me. I am a beginner level for NSX, which is our networking and security, um, well, networking security in this case. And um, it provides me, we get time, so this gives you some instructions on how the lab works. And here you can see the different steps. Whoops. So it provides me. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So here's the steps. Double click on the Chrome, click on the three tier upset. So, so you can see it, it actually provides me getting into the real. Uh, uh, the real environment I can get into it and show you the real one here if you want, but it is. Did it give me a password? It probably did not over before, but um, so this is actually logging into the, the actual software. So, so that's um, like I said. So this is really how it works. I don't know if there's anything fun I can do on here, Fraser. I said I don't know what I'm doing on here. You're the you're the techie. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> here, but to show you, on it, but it is. You picked the uh, you picked the product that I don't support, so <laughs> I don't know if I can do much here. <laughs> so anyway, you can see the uh, the experience that it can provide for you with that hands-on learning uh, and the access to that. It does. Um, by the way, it does once I complete it. So if I have, um, but you can even reset the computer here. But when I am done. And I click, I'm not sure what I clicked on here, Postman. So when I click and when I'm done going through all the guidance and I've done all of the tools in there and I click in, on the back end, um, if it was an exam, it would actually, it would actually shut that down and then run an automated scoring script to see if you had completed all of the tasks. For the hands-on lab experience, there's nothing to save. So it actually shuts it down and it resets that instance of the software um, and so it really is when you're inside of it, it actually creates your own essence. You can do whatever you want with it. Like we've talked about, play around with that. And then when it closes it down, it, um, it basically resets it. And you can have multiple users. They bring up their own instance at the same time. So um, we really have, I don't think, I don't think HOL has, has run into um, their maximum number of concurrent users. Um, on our lab exams, we actually have not yet either. We're able to support up to the hundreds of concurrent. We haven't reached that limit as well yet either. So, um, so multiple people at the same time will bring up from that same environment multiple. I call them instances. There's probably a different term for it as well, but um, of that, of that basically do that pod uh, that they can run. And so when it shuts down, it basically just it saves that. And in our case, it saves it for a little while uh, because it's an exam. If there needs to be review, in the case of the hands-on lab, it just it's gone. It, it deletes it to save those resources. So, um, so it really provides that. Uh, anyway, it really meets the like, way to provide that experience. So. Anything else you want to add, Frazier? Talked about here. We think we have a few minutes for Q and A. Yeah, I think we're good for Q and A, and I've been answering some of the Q and A as it's been coming in uh, in chat. Oh, perfect. 